focus is a ton of good news, but the fourth is the most check that I want you to know. Continue watching this video. With the aim of returning to normal, many states have already called an end to their public health emergencies. This means the enhanced net payments that the residents have enjoyed during the crisis may also pause. A total of 18 states have ended their enhanced net benefits at the end of last month, and this leaves 17 states who have acknowledged extension through June. According to USDA the March 2020, back then the US government, through the Families First Response Act, allowed states to issue enhanced emergency allotment benefits. The Federal Public Health Emergency was initially announced when the crisis started in January 2020, and the Department of Health and Human Services says it gives 60 days notices to states prior to the expiration of the health emergency. For the July, for the July 15th end date, the 60 day notice is on May 17th, and states have been providing emergency allotments to SNAP households since the start of the crisis. As the economy recovered from the, from the initial crisis shock, some states have questioned the justification for all households to receive the maximum SNAP benefit. As a consequence, these states have opted to announce the end of their respective public health emergencies and their enhanced SNAP benefit payments earlier than others. On the other hand, more than 40 million Americans who get help buying groceries through SNAP are using and seeing their benefits plunge even as the nation struggles with the biggest increase in food costs in decades. A number of states will continue to provide the enhanced payment to the residents up to the date of the federal up to the date the federal public health emergency ends. And Joe Manchin threw another wrench into Biden's economic agenda, saying it was ludicrous to pursue tax credits for electric vehicles. Democratic lawmakers are pushing for Biden's Build Back Better plan, and they say the electric vehicle tax credits are still under consideration. Folks, if you have any questions about the Fort must check, be sure to leave them in the comments below. Jason Snipe, I, I want to ask you the, the question this way, I guess. Because, you know, everybody wants to sell when the market's falling out of bed and it looks like it's going to go down and you want to preserve the capital you have and then it goes down a lot and then you never know when that moment is to get back in because you're too afraid to do so because you think it's going to go even lower than that. So my question to you is how are we going to know? How are the viewers going to know when, when it's the time to buy? Beyond looking at just the heart net levels, right, you can throw any level out there and say, well, when it gets to that level, that's the signal. But it needs to be deeper than that. Do, do we need to see energy prices come down? Is that it? Do we need to see a clearer sign overall that inflation is peak? Do we need to wait to earnings and see what the guidance is going to be? Do we need to wait and see estimates really come down because they, they have not? Do we simply look at oversold conditions and suggest, well, stocks are cheap, 40% of the S&P is at a 52-week low? What's the signal? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I honestly think it, it has a lot to do with CPI. I mean, in, inflation is the raging storm that we're all dealing with as, as investors, as managers. I think that that is the big deal here. So we've, we've talked about peak inflation. Clearly, we've been wrong. At least I've been wrong on the panel talking about that. Um, so I think as inflation begins to moderate and, and abate some, obviously, you're seeing a little bit of that in core you know, but but energy and food pricing, that's that's where the numbers are really coming from and shelter costs as well. So I think when that starts to, to abate some, I think then you will feel more comfortable uh, in terms of moving into the market. But I'll, I'll also say my, in my other point, in terms of just dollar cost averaging into the market, you don't want to wait until all of these things happen. I think we can start to see some signaling soon, hopefully in the next couple of quarters. But I do think it's appropriate now to start to dollar cost average into the market if you have some cash on the sidelines and, and look to greener pastures ahead. See, you know, and even though that's that might take some time, but I think it's I think you should be looking at that as a as an investment strategy. See, the Pete, the, the 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 problem with my list, whether it's energy coming down, whether it's clear sign inflation is peaked, whether it's earnings and guidance and then estimates coming down, you don't get good answers to those questions for a couple of weeks. There are no great data points yeah. coming up for a couple of weeks, either on inflation, PCE, CPI, earnings start in July. Maybe you'll start to get revisions when, you know, the rubber meets the road. Reality sets in for those who refuse to do it so far. How would you answer that question? What's the moment? It's not an exact science of just looking at levels. What is it? Right. I, well, I would say that uh, in agreement with the, the, the commentary about oil and the price of oil, I think that right now is by far the biggest component of what we're looking at here because it's not just us at the pump, Scott. It's all those places around the country, and we hear about it all the time.